Hello everyone, today we have the quiz one explanation and for this explanation I'm going to explain the lab math. So we had the first and the third questions about calculations. Okay, so the first question is about the stock solution which is 10 milligram per milliliter. So this is the serum and we want to reach uh, three different solutions uh, with the concentration final one, concentration final two, and concentration final three. So final one is 25 microgram per milliliter. Uh, the second one, 733 nanograms per milliliter. And the last one is 110 nanograms per milliliter. Uh, for all of those, we would want to have the final volume of 25 microliters. Okay, so we cannot jump from this stock concentration directly to any of those finals, because in this case we would operate with nanoliters and we cannot take those nanoliters. Okay, so it implies the usage of the serial dilution. So for the first final concentration, we would go uh, with the tubes in which we have nine microliters. And from stock, we take one microliter. As you remember from the formula, dilution factor is equal to the, um, the starting volume plus the volume that's already there, so existing volume, divided by the starting volume. And it is, it is equal to one microliter plus nine microliters divided by one microliter. So the dilution factor in these two tubes would be 10. So the concentration will drop after each of these dilution, it will drop 10 times. So here we have the same setup. So after two consequent dilutions, we will have 10 by 10 uh, degradation of the concentration. So 10 milligrams per milliliter divided by 100 is equal to 100 microgram per milliliter. So in this second tube, we have concentration equal to 100 microgram per milliliter. So from here, we could go and have a direct dilution to 25 micrograms per milliliter. So how do we do that? We do it from the formula, which is C2 v2 equals to cf1 times vf vf is 25 microliters cf1 is 25 microgram per milliliter c2 is 100 microgram per milliliter so we need to find v2 which is 25 microliters times 25 microgram per milliliter divided by 100 microgram per milliliter so it is equal to both of those they cancel each other and here we are left with one fourth so 25 divided by 4 is 6.25 microliters so the final dilution for uh, for the first concentration it will be getting the third tube so 25 minus 6.25 is equal to 18.75 mic um, microliters of the solvent and 6.25 microliters of the uh, content of the second tube. So if we have 6.25 microliters, um, carried from the second tube, it will give us the needed concentration here. So here we uh, we have finished with this guy. Now let's switch to the next one. So let's say we have the same setup. So the first tube, the second tube, we have 9 and 9 microliters. So from stock, we get 1 microliter then the consequent dilution is one microliter again. So in the second one, 
as we know already, it is 100 microgram per milliliter. But we need to reach uh, 703, uh, 733 nanograms per milliliter, which is less than 1 microgram per milliliter. So we need to dilute this second tube twice more with the same setup to reach the needed 1 microgram per milliliter. So 1 microliter here and 1 microliter here. In this case, after we, we've reached uh, the fourth tube, the concentration of the fourth tube would be equal to 1 microgram per milliliter. Or, in other words, it's 1000 nanograms per milliliter. Okay, so we have 1000 nanograms per milliliter, and if we want to reach three, uh, 733 nanograms per milliliter, we can do it directly. So from here, we have gain C4V4 equal to CF2 times VF. In this case, V4 is equal to 25 microliters times 733 nanograms per milliliter divided by 1000 nanograms per milliliter. So these nanograms per milliliter, they cancel each other, and we are left with a simple calculation here. So let's see how much is that. So 733 divided by 1000 times 25. It is 18325. 18 microliters and 3 to 5 nanoliters. So, um, this is how much we want to have our fourth tube content in our working volume or final volume. So, we will have something and then we are going to carry 18 3 to 5 microliters to have 25 microliters of the uh, second final concentration. Okay, so this is how to get to uh, 733 nanograms, and we will want to have another dilution here with nanogram, uh, 100 nanograms per milliliter. So let's move from the same tube again. So what we have here, we have C4V4 equal to CF3 times VF. And in this case, V4 is equal to uh, 110 nanograms per milliliter times 25 microliters divided by 1000 nanograms per milliliter. We can cancel these guys and it will be equal to 25 times 25 times um, 275 275 microliters so in this case we have another dilution here so uh, 22 25 microliters of the solvent and we carry 275 microliters of this fourth tube uh, into our prepared tube to achieve the needed concentration. Okay, nice. So we have we have all those calculations here, and it's really easy if you try solving it, which means if you never try solving any serial dilutions they will be they will be really difficult for you okay so let's move to the second one so one two it is about the finding surface areas of petri dish with six centimeters diameter then 10 centimeter 15 centimeter and flasks um 15 by 10 
3 by 2, 4 by 3, and finally 16 by 9. So you know that we have the surface of the circle, uh, which is PR squared. So in this case, we have diameter, and of course, radius is 3 centimeter, 5 centimeters, and 7.5 7 centimeters. So, of course, the surface area would be 9 pi, um, 25 pi, and 7.5, 7 7.5 times 7.5 is equal to 56.25 pi. Okay, so um, just solve these small multiplications and you will understand the the surface area. Um, as I remember here we will have 28, 27. Uh, for 25 we would have 78.5 and finally for this guy is 160, 176, 65 centimeters squared. Okay, so for the flask, what is flask? So the flask is something like this. So okay, so. Uh, it is actually a real rectangle, so here we have the widths and here we have the lengths, which means the surface area is equal to widths times lengths. 150 centimeters squared, 6 centimeters squared, then 12 centimeters squared, and finally 144 centimeters squared. Really easy. Uh, just don't get lost. Flask is a flask. So the one that you use, Falcon flask, is a cylinder. And we don't ask you to find the the surface area of it. Um, if you if you have something like the widths and the lengths, of course it's easy to understand that it is a real rectangle. Okay, so now let's switch to the uh, to the uh, counting of the cells. Okay, so here on this slide we have uh, the dead cells, which are shown like this. Okay, so these are dead cells. So we would want to count dead and live cells to understand the um, the cell count and the viability. Okay, so let's let's calculate. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight cells, and two of them are dead. So this is a square. Then we have c square. So it's one, two, three, four, five, five cells. One of them is dead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, so A, B, C, D, E, E square is uh, seven cells, two of that. G and I. Okay, so for G we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six cells out, uh, two of them are dead. And finally we have one, two, three, four, five, Five cells and one of them dead in the I square. Okay, so uh, what, what do we do? We first define the number of cells, and in this case, the average number is 8 plus 6 plus 5 plus 7 plus 5, and gives you um, uh, 15 plus 16. So it's 31, 
divide it by 5 and it is mm, around 6.2 cells. Okay, so uh, for the dead cells, it's 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2. So it is 8 cells. 8 divided by 5 is equal to 1 and 6. So uh, let's define the mm, variability, which is 1.6 divided by uh, 6.2. 25.8. So 25.8% of cells are dead, which means 100 minus 25.8 is equal to 74.2% of live cells. So the viability is about uh, 75%. Okay, so this is for this particular picture. So let's define the number for the second picture so in this case we have dead cells 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 11 dead cells so for the first square we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 7 cells one, two, three, four, four cells for the uh, third square. Then for the fifth one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine and one is dead. One, two, three, four, five, zero dead. One, two, three, four, five, one dead. Okay, so the number of cells, uh, average number of cells is seven plus. 4 plus 9 plus 5 plus 5. For the dead cells, we have 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1. Okay, so we have uh, the division by 5 because we have 5, uh, 5 squares. And in this case, we have 2 divided by 5 is 0 0.4. And for the total number of cells, we have uh, 14, 18, uh, 25, 30. 30 divided by 5 is 6. So the viability is of 5.6 divided by 6, and it is equal to 93%. Okay, so the viability is 93%. So this is the end for the first question. And now let's switch to the question number three. You have T75 flask and it is 70% confluent. So 75 means that we have 75 centimeters squared uh, area for this flask. And 70% of this area is occupied by cells. Okay, so we have the experiment in 48 hours. So here we have 0 hours. And the doubling number is 16. So 16, 32, and then we have 48. So we have three full divisions of the cells. So we have the division here, here, and here. The total division is 2 to the power of 3. Uh, what do we have here? We would want to have 70 to 80 percent confluency uh, at the time of the uh, of the experiment. So now we are seeding them 70 divided by 8 or 80 divided by 8. In this case it is 8.75 and in this case it's 10 percent. Okay, so these are two um, values for the percentage that we want to extract from these 70% confluent cells. Okay, so nice. This is the first uh, calculation that I would want to see in your answers. So let's have the first ratio. So the first ratio is the ratio of the surface to the 
certain of the surface from which we are moving cells to the surface to which we are moving cells. So in this case, we have the 75 centimeters squared. This is our from, and our two is um, two diameter equal to two centimeters, which is one centimeter radius. And if we want to have the surface area, it is PR squared or 3.14 times 1 centimeter squared. Okay, so 3.14 here. And now we would want to have this ratio. So why are you looking for this ratio? So why would you want to have this ratio? Because if you just seed um, these cells to your um, new area, they will be overgrown from the start. So you would want to see them from 75 to 75. And in this case, you would, you would only think of the difference in the uh, percentage. So the percentage of receiving cells. But when you have difference in the surface areas, you have to think of these ratio of areas too. So in this case, we are moving from bigger plate to a smaller plate, which means that um, 3.14 divided by 75. Okay, so in this case, this ratio would be equal to 75 divided by 3.14, 1 over 23.89. So if you take this particular ratio, of your cells, they will be 70% um, confident on your new wells. Okay, so if you just take this ratio to the new uh, to the new plate, they will be 70% confident from the start, which is not what we want. Okay, that's why this is your first ratio. Now let's find the second ratio. So, instead of 70%, you would want them to have 8.75 or 10%, which means that the new ratio is 8.75% to 70, or 10% to 70. Why 70? Because this is what we have now. And what we want is 8.75 or 10%. Okay, so this guy would be equal to 70 divided by 875 is 8. So 1 8 or uh, 1 7. Okay, so um, this is the second ratio, the ratio of confluences. Okay, so having these ratios, we now might um, receive the cells in a way that we obtain either 70 or 80% confluency after 48 hours of growing. Okay, so what we do, we take this T75 flask, we take 2389 times 8 or T75 2389 times 7. So if we take these ratios, then we would achieve um, the 8.75% confluency at the start in our 2 cm diameter wells, or 10% confluency at the start. Okay, so what do we, what do we know about these guys? Um, we know that we actually have um, the trypsinization step and trypsinization step. Okay, the, this trypsinization it includes first incubation with trypsin, then we have the addition of CDMEM, and after we neutralize the trypsin, we count the cells. And if after trypsinization we have some kind of number, in which case we have um, 
250,000 cells per milliliter uh, concentration. It is only possible if we already added the CDMM. And we know that it is 3 milliliters. So this is 3 milliliters. What, what it tells you? It actually tells you that all of the cells that were in this T75, they are within these 3 milliliters. Okay, now it's really easy. Uh, what do we need to take uh, from these 3 milliliters and move them to our 6 well plate? Uh, is 3 milliliters or 3000 microliters divided by 2389 times 8 or 3000 microliters divided by 2389 times 7 and this will give you how much microliters we actually need to transfer to our 6 wheel plates okay let's calculate it So, in the first case it is 15.7 microliters, in the second case it is 17.94 um, microliters. So, this is the number, um, this is the volume that we take from this uh, T75 flask and move it to our six well plate so that we have in the in first case we have 8.75 percent confluency at the start and in the second scenario when we add 1794 microliters in this case we will have about 10 percent confluency at the start so after uh, 48 hours we will have 70% or 80% confidence for the experiment. Nice, we have this volume for 70 and we have the volume for 80. And now let's define the number of cells that we have within these microliters. So what do we have? We have the concentration of the cells per milliliter. So in this case, 250,000 cells per milliliter or 250 cell per microliter and in this case um, the number of cells is equal to CV uh, so concentration times the volume so in the first case volume is 15.7 microliters times 250 cell per microliter, so these microliters they cancel each other and now we have the number of cells in the well if we added 15.7 microliters so 15.7 microliters times 250 is 3925 cell in the 6 well plate in the uh, let's call it two centimeter well okay so this is for 70 and for 80 we have 794 microliters times 250 so per microliter and it is equal to 794 times 250 4485 cell in two centimeter well so these are the answers this guy this guy this guy and this guy i hope it was clear please email me if you don't understand how we got it uh, bye bye for now